Hi Mohad, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I wanted to share in this talk some real life examples for, of, of uh, projects we've been doing and challenges we've faced uh, while doing causal inference in the wild, so to speak, um, uh, over across a variety of fields, uh, software, finance, retail, and just a little bit on how we are addressing them. Um, so, uh, some background about myself and Vianai. I'm a chief, chief scientist at uh, Vianai. I personally got seriously involved in causality uh, in my previous job when I led uh, data science for um, Kali, the world's second largest uh, healthcare payer provider. And uh, almost a year ago, I joined Vianai. Um, Vianai is a technology led services startup, which means um, we are providing consulting for causality projects and, and we're also building a platform uh, initially to support uh, our consulting work, our services. Um, in the future, we might uh, provide that platform uh, directly. We've been around for about a year. We have about 15 uh, enterprise customers, 40 employees. Uh, our founder is the guy uh, on the left there sitting next to the computer. Vishal Sika is kind of a prominent figure. He's on the board of, B of BMW, of Oracle. Um, so naturally we focus on uh, large enterprises or global 2000 companies. Uh, so my examples are going to be from use cases there. Um, and um, the, I'm going to share, briefly share uh, in the time we have, um, three industry use cases uh, to illustrate uh, three, three key challenges from our, our experience in doing successful causal inference uh, projects in industry. Um, and these challenges are going to be for various stages of a project. Um, and I'm going to start with something that is very much related to the, to the previous talk uh, around uh, our work with a large uh, enterprise SaaS, a popular service here uh, probably familiar with and, and uh, maybe even using, um, and they have an email newsletter um, on one of their key products. Um, and um, a well-known uh, question in marketing is who should get this newsletter? So um, the effect of reaching out to our customers is highly heterogeneous. We just saw an example of that. Um, some people like getting this, this newsletter and exploring new product features, but others find it annoying. Um, so um, while uh, setting this project up, initially the treatment was quite clear, who should be getting this newsletter, um, um, but the outcome was uh, far from so. Um, uh, we had started with defining the clicks or click-through rate, the CTR, uh, as the outcome. Uh, as discussions progressed, um, we realized we also need to account for adverse effects, uh, other adverse effects of sending newsletters, such as uh, unsubscribes, and um, further on, um, also account for long-term effects, which were actually what the company cares about. Um, for example, product usage, uh, customer retention, and ultimately lifetime value. Um, so the question of what outcome should we define for our uh, evaluation um, uh, was highly non-trivial. Um, in this particular case, we eventually uh, selected a trade-off between long and short-term outcomes, but uh, I, I think this represents a broader issue in uh, doing causal inference projects, uh, what I would call framing. So defining the business value that the project is supposed to achieve and uh, the analysis that would uh, actually achieve it. Um, so uh, most of this field is is outside the realm of causal inference. Most of the literature in causal inference assumes these are already defined, but actually going out and defining them, uh, we find to be not a simple problem. And, and there are a variety of solutions. Um, one clear solution is around processes. So defining what exactly needs to be answered and defined. Um, we uh, defining the objective function and and what policy value improvement you wish to get out from the project, uh, deriving a target try, defining units, outcomes, treatments, um, uh, collecting data about past policies and so forth, um, and also the experience of how to get this information, asking the right questions, uh, visualizations and so forth. Um, but there are also um, data science tools. So, um, one example here is uh, using short-term proxies for long-term outcomes. So uh, one challenge to summarize is around framing the project. A second uh, example I wanted to share is from a call we had last week with a large global bank. 
around their marketing budget. So they had, the setup is relatively straightforward, I think. They have weekly data on how much they spend on their marketing channels, how much they would spend on uh, Facebook, on Google, on TV ads, on radio commercials, and also the sales uh, data for that week, So, uh, which is, in this case, the outcome. And if we had a model relating um, our decisions about budget allocation on every one of these channels um, to sales, uh, we could optimize it. We could uh, basically play around with a, a counterfactual decisions and uh, see what uh, we should do. Um, however, uh, and, and of course, when, when building these models, you need to account for uh, confounding and other control variables and also minimize variance by including predictors. Uh, and I think uh, many causal practitioners looking at this problem uh, would see that there are quite a bit uh, quite a few challenges in building these types of models. One being, for example, that there are multiple actions and the actions are continuous. Uh, achieving positivity or overlap is highly non-trivial. Another challenge is adaptivity. These channels may, be, may uh, behave similarly over many weeks, but suddenly one week uh, could be uh, pretty different than, than others, so it, the model needs to adapt. Uh, there are also challenges about the optimization. So how do you account for uncertainty in your model? How do you take actions and explore to uh, mitigate that uncertainty? And that use case represents a broader challenge in my view uh, around what I might call complexity. So in many cases, we see a gap between the current state of technology in causality and what our customers would like to do. For example, um, unit definitions are usually treated as a single decision point, but many actions are sequential, many decisions are sequential. Um, we usually assume sattva, but real life has interference. We, have, we like treating single dichotomous treatments, but real life, as we see, as we uh, have just seen, has many continuous treatments in many cases, and the treatments uh, we like limiting them to the overlap domain, but our customers want to extrapolate and take action over the entire domain. And policies need to, uh, policies need to adapt. So there do exist uh, technical solutions around uh, almost uh, every one of these challenges, but uh, they are not as mature as um, the solutions uh, to the mainstream uh, types of challenges. So uh, that is a second type of, of challenge. And the third use case I wanted to share with you was around uh, retail assortment planning. This is with a, a global, very large supermarket chain. Um, and they have to make decisions around their aisles and uh, how they are um, built, basically. So this is a process uh, by which the aisles you see when you walk down the supermarket um, uh, are optimized. Uh, there are many decisions uh, to take there, such as where to place the items, uh, how, what, what quantities to place in, uh, uh, in each item, uh, wh how to, what prices to set, what promotions to take, uh, etc., etc. And for a large retailer, these are major decisions. They uh, are done once every many months, and they incur. Uh, significant labor costs, they have supply chain implications, and of course they affect sales quite dramatically. So uh, this is not something that is easily experimentable with, and when we provide solutions around these decisions or tools to support decision-making in those fields, we need to make sure we can explain that it, uh, we, we, we need to know that it actually works. And the question of how certain we are in uh, our analysis and the results uh, is a fundamental question that is uh, underlying every project we do and I think uh, is a recurring theme uh, in this uh, conference. And uh, there are, of course, challenges that people have uh, mentioned before. Um, there are statistical types of tools, uh, such as uh, measuring predictive performance or simulating outcomes. Uh, you can evaluate the results and compare them, for example, to experimental, uh, previous experimental data you may have, or conduct new experiments. And, uh, that is an entire field. And you can play around with uh, your data or your process and uh, try to get a sense of the 
uh, sensitivity of the process and uh, to various factors. Um, however, these are of course heuristics and the question uh, of are we certain in our analysis and our results uh, is a fundamental one in our uh, view. So to summarize uh, briefly, um, we touched upon uh, three key challenges we see in our projects. Uh, the first one was framing uh, the issue of complexity and validation. There are many more, of course, we could not touch on every one of them, um, uh, around uh, achieving positivity, um, combining experimentation of policy evaluation, how to select models, the performance of these models, and, and so forth, and uh, many more that I haven't listed here. At Vainai, we believe that there's more to do to address these challenges. Um, uh, some of the work should be done by industry building solutions like ours, uh, and of course, academic research. Um, so I'm going to uh, conclude by uh, inviting you to share your questions, share your thoughts. Um, if you want to uh, discuss or collaborate, feel free to reach out directly um, uh, via email or here at the conference. And so thank you very much.